Hi everyone, thanks very much for joining me. So in this video, I just want to take the opportunity to talk a little bit about the varied film career of Sidney J. Fury, um, director of such films as Superman IV, The Quest for Peace, the classic Harry Palmer thriller, The Ipcris File, and the Oscar nominated 1972 movie about Billie Holiday, Lady Sings the Blues, starring Diana Ross and Billy Dee Williams. But I'm not going to be talking about those films today. Part of the reason I'm doing this is that next month, Imprint Films, the Australian boutique label, uh, they are going to be releasing a very interesting box set of 1970s films from Sidney J. Fury. Um, and maybe, like me, you might not have seen these films, um, so I'm really intrigued by them. Um, the films that are going to be included on this set, um, here's the actual release information. Um, you can go to the Imprint Films website via Via Vision to see more information. Um, but yeah, they're, the films are going to be uh, The Lawyer, which has got Barry Newman in it uh, as his character, Petricelli, a lawyer character. Um, many people might know Barry Newman uh, for starring as Kowalski in the excellent car chase movie Vanishing Point from the 70s. A really great movie. Um, and then also the set is going to have uh, a film called Hit, which features Billy D. Williams and Richard Pryor. Um, there's also going to be Little Faust and Big Halsey, which stars Robert Redford and Michael J. Pollard. Uh, Michael J. Pollard was a, a kind of an actor, I think, that uh, is of an acquired taste. Uh, he starred in films such as Bonnie and Clyde, uh, but also... Uh, one of my favourites as well, which is Hannibal Brooks. Uh, there he is, Michael J. Pollard. Um, that was a film that uh, was directed by Michael Winner and uh, also starred Oliver Reed. Um, and then the set is also going to include uh, a film, Sheila Levine is Dead and Living in New York, which stars Roy Scheider and Jeannie Berlin. Um, and then it's also going to include a Vietnam film called The Boys in Company C. Uh, so a 70s film, it came well before Platoon and Full Metal Jacket. Um, but interestingly, The Boys in Company C features R. Lee Ermey, who uh, is the a famous shouting sergeant uh, who was in Full Metal Jacket. Um, so yeah, very interesting 70s films there from Sidney J. Fury. Uh, so I'm really, really intrigued by this set. And I think it's quite a, a bold release for imprint films because really with Sidney J. Fury, obviously Superman 4, The Quest for Peace, um, was not a big hit with many critics and audiences. Um, and really in the last 20 years, um, although he has carried on with his film career, a lot of the films that have been released are, if you like, the kind of straight to video uh, kind of releases. There's no big box office hits at all. Um, they're all perhaps, if you like, yeah, more minor films. So uh, sort of actioners that uh, star Dolph Lundgren or Casper Van Dien um, or comedies, you know, the late career of Rodney Dangerfield um, and uh, or a bunch of uh, kind of, you know, war related movies as well. So, yeah, none of those were big hits at all in the last 20 years. So, yeah, what do audiences really think about Sidney J. Fury? Are they going to be intrigued to get this box set? Um, I certainly am. Uh, it's a bit pricey, so I hope I can get my hands on it. Um, getting imprint films in Canada is not always the easiest, but uh, um, but yeah, I will certainly be looking out for it. But anyway, I want to just uh, move on to talk about some of the other films from Sidney J. Fury uh, that I have seen. and. Um, Hopefully, if I mention some of these, it might spark your interest. But also, please let me know, have you seen any of the films that are going to be in the uh, Imprint Films box set? Or have you seen any of the following? Okay, so Sidney J. Fury is a Canadian director, um, but he actually moved over to England fairly early in his career. Uh, and so in the early 60s, he was making films in England. Um, so one of the first ones that I've seen is a film called The Snake Woman from 1961. Um, this is quite an interesting little movie. Um, not particularly scary, but it does have its atmospheric moments. Um, basically, it's set in sort of 1890s Northumberland, I think. And you have a scientist who's uh, living with his uh, ill pregnant wife um, and he 
is injecting her with snake venom to sort of cure her mental illness. Um, and uh, when the villagers get to learn about all of this, uh, there's all suspicions of witchcraft and sorcery and uh, things of that nature, and uh, the house gets burnt down, um, but not before um, the child is born. And then some 20 years later, people start dying mysteriously and Scotland Yard have to investigate. Um, so yeah, this is a fun little movie from 1961. Like I say, not particularly scary, but there are some really good moments in it, particularly in the opening scenes where there's lots of snakes inside this house and uh, um, and all the scenes where the uh, villagers are actually attacking the house and burning it down. All of that is very well done. Um, and then there's some sort of atmospheric moments out on the moors and things as well. So yeah, quite a nice little film, The Snake Woman from 1961. And then next from 1961, and a film which really was successful for Sidney J. Fury, and it's this one, The Young Ones, uh, which starred Cliff Richard and The Shadows. Um, now, I know Cliff Richard is perhaps not in fashion nowadays, and very few people seem to be watching this film, but it really is worth a look. This is a lot of fun. Um, and so, yeah, the film, like I say, stars Cliff Richard in The Shadows, but also an actress, Carol Gray, um, who had a fairly short-lived career, but featured in films such as The Curse of the Fly and The Brides of Fu Manchu. Um, but here she has a lovely role in this film and uh, does a, a couple of nice dance numbers. Um, but yeah, this is just a bright and breezy musical, uh, particularly if you're interested in um, British locations as well, then it has some uh, great uh, shots here. Um, the actual title track, The Young Ones, is done at this place, Ricelip Lido, um, which is no longer in use, but at the time it was a, a very popular kind of resort for Londoners to go to, to uh, sort of swim and do water sports. And so you get to see all of that in the background whilst he's singing that number. Um, and then at the finale of the film as well, um, they do a, a sort of um, put on a show uh, event at this place called the Finsbury Park Empire. Really nice old theater that uh, closed down shortly uh, around the time of that film. Um, so yeah, for historical interest, it's good for that. But yeah, like I say, this is just a, a fun musical. There's some really nice numbers in here. The choreography, whilst not um, spectacular is still a lot of fun so yeah this is very enjoyable and the cinematography all done in cinema scope is by Douglas Slocum yeah he also did the uh, Indiana Jones trilogy next from 1962 is a terrific courtroom drama that's called The Boys um, I really was impressed with this one um, it's mostly set in a courtroom but there are some uh, flashback sequences to the events of a night basically this is a film about four youths uh, who are standing trial for uh, having murdered a night watchman at a garage um, and the whole case is about really whether they uh, are guilty or not. Uh, so we've got Richard Todd acting as the prosecuting counsel and Robert Morley as the defence counsel. Um, but then the four youths, um, actually played by guys who are already in their 20s, um, yeah, really interesting cast. Uh, one of the cast mem members is Dudley Sutton, and I'll go on to talk about him in another film that was done by um, Sidney J. Fury. Uh, but two others you might know. There's a very young looking Ronald Lacey, um, who uh, perhaps many people will know more famously as being the villainous tote in Raiders of the Lost Ark. And you might remember that famous sequence where uh, he has his face melted in that film. Um, and then one of the other youths is played by Tony Garnett. Um, now Tony Garnett went on to have a, an interesting career uh, as a producer and he actually uh, produced Ken Loach's film Kez um, as well as being a writer and director on a 1983 film called Handgun starring Karen Young uh, which is well worth uh, looking at if you can find it. Um, but yeah, this I was really impressed with this film. It's a really uh, kind of um, uh, questioning kind of film, if you like, about the uh, judicial system, um, and uh, it keeps you intrigued throughout and has quite a sort of somber ending to it as well. So yeah, really, really enjoyed seeing The Boys. Very worth uh, checking that one out. Next is a really fascinating film from 1964, and it's called The Leather Boys. Um, this is 
definitely worth seeing. Um, so in this film, the headline star is Rita Tushingham, um, a British actress, and she had been successful just a few years earlier in this film, A Taste of Honey, uh, where she played a young girl who gets pregnant and runs away from home, uh, but befriends a young gay man and moves in with him. Uh, so yeah, quite a notorious film for its time. Um, now, The Leather Boys is uh, basically centred on a young man, Colin Campbell, uh, who marries Rita Tushingham, and they marry very young, or probably only about sort of 16 at the time, um, and really they're just still trying to find their way in life. I mean, they're very um, immature and trying to find their identity and trying to find uh, their roles in life as well. So he kind of gets frustrated in his marriage because he thinks that, you know, his wife should be there just... Uh, being kind to him and cooking his meals and uh, ironing his shirts and all that kind of thing. Um, but he wants to be out enjoying himself. He's a motorcyclist. He loves being on his motorbike. Um, and as a motorcyclist, uh, he often meets up with other bikers that are at this cafe, the Ace Cafe. Now, this was a, an actual cafe on the North Circular Road in London uh, that's still very popular. Uh, so you get some great footage of this uh, cafe area. Um, but yeah, when he goes to this cafe uh, and meets all the other motorcyclists, he meets this uh, character played by Dudley Sutton, um, who's very uh, exuberant and friendly and... Um, will listen to him they can talk about their problems and uh, the frustrations that he has with his his young wife and um and so quickly colin campbell's character starts realizing that he actually just enjoys the company of being with this uh, dudley sutton character um but at that same time he's not really fully understanding any kind of gay connotation with this it's just a kind of um, friendliness, if you like, um, that's gradually getting stronger and stronger, so stronger feelings for each other. Um, so what I really liked about this film, I mean, it never gets into any kind of um, full-on romantic relationship, if you like. It's much more about just their uh, behaviours together, uh, but it's it's a really sort of sensitively handled film, and um, I, I just really enjoyed it for that aspect to it. Um, and like I say, Dudley Sutton, who's uh, the the sort of uh, flamboyant biker who's in this, uh, he was in the previous film, The Boys, so very good in that. Um, and I must admit, it's completely revised my opinion of Dudley Sutton. Uh, Dudley Sutton, from my perspective, when I was a young uh, guy. Um, I, I would see him in some TV shows and uh, uh, other films and I really didn't like his acting style or the look of him that much or anything of that kind of nature really uh, so I kind of dismissed him but uh, I think he's excellent in both The Leather Boys and The Boys um, so yeah really interesting film to check this one out and again even if you're you know the, the sort of gay subtext or things like that are, are kind of a bit of a put off for you possibly I don't know um, but there's still a lot of interest in this film I mean if you if you like bikes and if you like uh, motorcycles and uh um, then there's a lot to see here as well. I mean, these guys go on uh, bike rides from London to Edinburgh, so uh, you get some great footage of uh, some of those kinds of scenes as well. So yeah, there's a lot of interesting things that happen in The Leather Boys, um, and it's definitely a film uh, that deserves a wider audience for sure. Next from 1967 uh, is an espionage thriller called The Naked Runner, um, starring Frank Sinatra. So this film comes two years after uh, Sidney J. Fury had directed The Ip Chris File with Michael Caine, uh, the famous Harry Palmer character. Uh, such a great movie, one of my favourites for sure. Um, but yeah, The Naked Runner, it reunites him with the same cinematographer, Otto Heller. So again, we get some really great compositions in this film, uh, great camera angles, um, and it's definitely the, the camera work that makes the film um, enjoyable and, and uh, because the plot itself does have some elements that kind of get dropped along the way or a little bit confusing at times and there's a very abrupt ending as well which makes the film ultimately feel a little bit disappointing um, but uh, like I say with Otto Heller's camera work uh, keeping things interesting uh, it remains a good espionage thriller with Frank Sinatra's character being a, a kind of um, industrialist a, a businessman who's kind of coerced into going to East Germany to carry out an assassination. Um, now one interesting little bit of trivia is apparently the uh, 
a gun that Frank Sinatra uses for his assassination attempt um, became the model for uh, Han Solo's uh, gun that was used in Star Wars. So I don't know the full truth of that, but uh, yeah, that's the trivia I heard. Anyway, The Naked Runner, uh, definitely an interesting one. Like I say, not hugely successful in terms of the story, um, but great, great camera work. Um, and also good supporting uh, performances from Peter Vaughan and Darren Nesbitt. Um, so yeah, Sinatra himself, as I understand it, I think the production was a little bit of a troubled one with him sort of wanting to do his own thing, um, which kind of interrupted the shoot. Um, but nonetheless, still an interesting film, The Naked Runner. And next from 1981 is a film I think is really great uh, and it's this one The Entity um, starring Barbara Hershey and Ron Silver and uh, adapted from a novel by Frank de Felita uh, who also wrote Audrey Rose. Um, yeah this is a great movie uh, very very interesting it did fall foul of critics I think a lot mainly I think because of the assertion based on true events um, because what we have here is Barbara Hershey's character um, effectively being repeatedly sexually assaulted by what seems to be a hidden force um, so the question really is then uh, is she hysterical is she reliving some kind of past sexual trauma um, or is she actually being attacked by some kind of uh, poltergeist um, so yeah I wouldn't quite call this a horror movie it's perhaps more of a psychological kind of uh, uh, drama um, but with some tense and scary moments in it. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I just think this is a really thrilling film. Uh, certainly, I mean, the film must surely embellish some of the facts, I think, if there are facts in this case, um, because uh, when we get to the latter part of the film, uh, we get Ron Silver's character, who's a parapsychologist, and he kind of recreates uh, Barbara Hershey's house in this big studio environment. Um, and uh, I find it difficult to believe that that really could have been recreated uh, in real life the way it was done in the film but uh, uh, nonetheless I, I find this a really really fascinating film and I think Barbara Hershey's performance in this is just uh, superb a very demanding kind of performance uh, for her uh, in a difficult role so yeah the entity is definitely uh, worth checking out and next in 1986 we have Iron Eagle this was a big hit for Sidney J Fury and uh, he actually directed a few of the sequels I think there was uh, four films in all and I think he's directed three of them um, but yeah this is pretty good fun I mean the film doesn't have quite the same lavishness as Top Gun uh, nor perhaps the level of cooperation probably from um, the military on it but uh, um, nonetheless yeah this is still uh, fairly enjoyable you've got Louis Gossett Jr here as a uh, uh, a guy who's training young Jason Gedrick here to um, uh, be a fighter pilot. Um, there's lots of music in this film, including Queen's One Vision that gets played a couple of times. Basically, Jen Jason Gedrick as a pilot, he likes to have his cassette player on in his cockpit. So uh, yeah, bit, uh, eat your heart out, Tom Cruise. I don't think he can fly and change cassettes at the same time um, like Jason Gedrick can, particularly at the end of the film when um, He's actually got a tape that's, uh, if you like, giving him some mentoring. Um, and uh, we get scenes cutting between music being heard in the cockpit, but then also um, this voice of the mentor. So, um, yeah, it left me with my mind boggling as to how quickly he kept having to um, change the tape in his player to be able to hear both. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, nonetheless, this is just quite good fun. So, like I say, lots of music. There are, you know, um, genuine flying sequences in this um, and then similarly you know, Iron Eagle 2 as well which um, uh, you know, had lesser acclaim but uh, this one has actually a plot that's not too dissimilar to uh, Top Gun Maverick in terms of the kind of mission that they have to carry out um, and yeah I quite like this one again it's got some you know actual flying sequences and uh, uses of helicopters and other military equipment um, so yeah you've got plenty of explosions and, uh, and all that kind of thing less music this time around and uh, Jason Gedrick's only in it for a, a few moments it has a different cast but still Louis Gossett Jr of course um, but uh, yeah no fairly enjoyable and then next from 1992 we have this comedy and it's uh, Rodney Dangerfield in Ladybugs 
Um, yeah, I mean, Rodney Dangerfield's an acquired taste, I would say. Um, he came to prominence, I guess, in the film Caddyshack alongside Chevy Chase um, and was also in a film called Easy Money. Um, but yeah, Sidney J. Fury actually did a couple of films with uh, Rodney Dangerfield, um, this one being the first. Um, I wouldn't say it's a great movie and definitely some of the comedy in here has perhaps not dated too well. Uh, Rodney Dangerfield plays a guy who's trying to win the favour of his boss and uh, agrees to coach a team of young um, girl soccer players um, and then has to get his son involved uh, to dress up as a girl to join the team and help them along. Um, yeah, the humour is not great. It's it's okay. It's watchable. Um, perhaps of interest in this is that the, um, the son is played by this young actor here, uh, Jonathan Brandis, um, and he also starred uh, around the same time along with Chuck Norris in this film Sidekicks. Uh, there he is, young Jonathan Brandis. Um, so yeah, Jonathan Brandis had a bit of an unfortunate uh, career, on, uh, tragically. I mean, he was a child star, um, so yeah, obviously he had uh, you know, pretty good success in these films, went on to do a few other things. Um, but when he got to his 20s, um, roles were not really um, picking up for him. And uh, yeah, tragically, he took his own life when he was only 27. Um, so that's a real shame. So um, yeah, I mean, he definitely has some good uh, uh, comic moments in this film, Ladybug. So worth seeing for, for young Jonathan Brandis there. And then really when we get into the career of Sidney J. Fury from the last 20 years, like I say, most of the films there are kind of director video type titles, um, nothing that's been a big release. Um, I did sample one film from uh, 2000 or 2002, I think it was, um, called Road Rage, um, which stars Casper Van Dien um, and uh, a little role as well for his wife, Catherine Oxenberg. Um, but uh, yeah, this film basically involves Casper uh, Van Dien coming to the rescue of a, a girl who's having a, an argument with her ex. Um, they get into a car together and then the rest of the movie is basically a chase movie where you've got the jilted uh, ex-boyfriends just chasing after them in a truck. Um, so actually it's not unlike um, the Russell Crowe film Unhinged, um, but uh, uh, obviously with less star power. Um, but uh, what I did like about Road Rage is that it does actually have some effective car chase moments in it, um, although the editing and the filming style is uh, a lot lower quality than um, Sidney J. Fury's previous films. Um, the script is absolutely terrible, um, so it's not good in that respect. But uh, like I say, there are some actual okay moments on the highways and motorways and uh, traveling around in woods and uh, down steep slopes. So yeah, plenty of car action, but uh, um, yeah, not a great film. But anyway, so that's just a, a taste of what I have seen of Sidney J. Fury. But yeah, let me know, have you seen any of the films that are gonna be coming out on the imprint? Uh, box set because uh, I find that set to be quite an intriguing one. I really like, there's a number of other directors I think who fall into a similar kind of category as Sidney J. Fury where they have had very erratic kinds of careers with some real highs and some real lows and then a lot of films that have just slipped by the wayside. Um, so actually I intend to do a, a couple of other videos talking about a couple of other directors um, at some point. But uh, yeah, please leave me your comments. Let me know, do you know um, any of the films I've just been talking about um, or are there other Sidney J. Fury films that I have not seen that you uh, would really recommend. Um, okay, thanks very much for joining me on this. I hope to see you again. I do appreciate any time you spend watching these videos, so thank you. All the best. Bye-bye.